Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. So today is about factoring. The dreaded, ah, factoring. And when we talk about, or when I'm talking about factoring today, it's not this, um, this kind where we say, okay, let's find the greatest common factor like that. This is very specifically talking about quadratics. Okay. And by quadratics, we mean things that are in, this is the form you'll see it presented. Okay. So the key factors here, <laughs> factors, it has an X squared or a variable. It doesn't have to be X. Let me put that out there. We have a squared variable and there's nothing higher than that. There's not a cube. There's not a fourth, fifth, anything. Squared's the highest. Then it's a quadratic. Our A, B's, and C's are just numbers that can be before there. They can be whole numbers. They can be positives, negatives. They can be fractions. It can be decimals, but they're just numbers that go before each of these. Now, if you're wondering if something like say this is a quadratic because it doesn't have those extra bits, well, yeah, it is because if we wanted to be tricky, we could write it like this. So yeah, so it's the same. And I know there's somebody out there that's saying, well, then it's not really a quadratic because then I could do something like this. Ha uh ha. -huh. And I go, oh, aren't you clever? But you know what I mean. Come on, you know what I mean. So anyway, AX squared plus BX plus C. That's what you're going to see a lot. Now, when we're talking about factoring, we are doing, whoa, it's supposed to slide it up, not draw a random blue line. Slide. Sl Why is it not working? Okay, this is bizarro world. Come on. There we go. Shoo wee. What happened with that? All right, let's erase. Let's just clear this off. Let's just start fresh. And it's not letting me clear the canvas. Okay. I think this thing is having, we're going to have to think we're going to have to pause and reboot this. All right. Reboot complete. All right. We're ready to proceed. So when we are talking about factoring, it's the opposite of what you've probably done. I hope you've done. <laughs> in your class is something like this, where we're taking this and we are multiplying. A lot of books call this FOIL, how we distribute. I'm hoping that little process looks familiar. Okay, well, let's just do it step by step. First, we multiply the first terms, so that's x squared. The outside terms, 5x. The inside terms, 2x and the last terms, 10. So, okay, we combine our two like terms in the middle, x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, so factoring is, what is with this mouse? Okay, this is just kind of ridiculous. Okay, all right. My mouse is, um, my goodness. I don't know what's going on with it. Maybe it needs new batteries. All right, so factoring is doing the opposite. So this we went from x plus 2 times x plus 5, and that got us to x squared plus 7x plus 10. Factoring is starting at this point and getting back to that x plus 2 times x plus 5. It's working back to it. It's saying, what two things did I multiply to get here? Okay. Now, why is there this, oh, that's just bizarre, a random red dot that won't disappear. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's do something, let's see, let's start with x squared plus 4x plus 3. And I want to know what two things, two binomials, use our technical term, we're multiplied together to get x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay? So, one reason why students uh, sometimes struggle with this is because unlike a lot of math problems where 
teachers can give you step-by-step instructions. Uh, like say, for example, if it was something like, um, like 5.3 plus 1.4, the teacher can tell you step-by-step, step, okay, add 3 plus 4 is 7. Bring down your decimal point. 5 plus 1 is 6. There, I've done it. It's You can do this with a lot of math. Factoring, it's a little bit of problem solving, and there's not necessarily a straightforward do this step and you have the answer. There's a little kind of like put on your Sherlock Holmes cap. So what you're doing is, um, well actually first before I tell you exactly what we're doing, let's think about the logic of what happens when we distribute something like what we just did. Like if I have say like x plus, and this is unrelated, I'm just picking two, x plus two times x plus four. Okay, if I do my little distribution, get x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 8. Okay, and that gets combined into x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now look at our two numbers that we started with. We started with we have 2 and 4. So 2 times 4 gives me 8. 2 plus 4 gives me 6. Okay? So that's what's happening here because the 2 times 4 gives me my final term. And then I've got 2 times x plus 4 times x. So 2 plus 4. 4 gets me to 6. And then our first term is the first two terms multiplied by each other. So those are the three big things, those three uh, properties, if you will, of you know, multiplying binomials. And that's what we're going to use when we're working backwards with the factoring. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. So back over here, so with all that in mind, first thing I'm going to look at is my first, x squared. There's no coefficient here by it, so it's just going to be an x times an x. Straightforward, right? And it's positive. So okay, x times x, there's no coefficient, just x times x. All right, that's done. Next step I'm going to look at is my signs. I've got plus and I've got a plus. All right, so I know... For this sign on this last term, this is this last term comes from multiplying whatever two numbers I put here. Now to multiply two numbers together and get a positive, they either both have to be positive or they both have to be negative. So I look now, now at the first one. If no, those numbers were both negative, then when they are added together to get my middle term, it would be a negative middle term, but it's not. It is positive. Okay, so that's how I know these signs are both positive. Everyone still with me on this? Because if I multiply a positive times a positive, I would get my positive 3. Or if I multiplied a negative times a negative, I would get a negative 3. However, we also want these two numbers to add together to our middle term. And if they're both negative added together, it would be negative. So if you want to have this as a rule, then you can say if both these signs are positive, then both these signs are positive. As you might guess, when things have negatives involved, it gets a little more interesting, but that's our first step is to figure out if we can, what signs are involved. All right. So then the final step of this process is to say, okay, I've got my first terms. I've got my signs. Now I need to know what multiplies to three, but adds to four. This one is a little more straightforward because three is prime. There's only one thing that multiplies to three, one times three. And I say, okay, 
one plus three, does that equal four? Yes, it does. So my answer is x plus one times x plus three. Okay, let's try one that has a little different here. What if it looked like this? Okay, you see the difference? I've got a negative here at front. So same process. I go, okay. First, I'm going to look at what multiplies to x squared. Well, that's just an x times an x. That's the only two things that, in this case, that multiply to x squared. x times an x. Okay. Right now, I look at my signs. I've got a negative and I've got a positive. So when I look at that positive, I go, okay, it multiplies to a positive. So either has to be a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative to get a positive three. Well, when I look at my first sign, it's a negative four X. So when I add my two terms together, you know, I multiply things and I'm doing my adding, it's going to add to a negative four. So it must be a negative times a negative. Okay. So now these will multiply to a positive, but they're going to add to a negative. So if it's a minus and then a plus, my term, my, my signs are minus and minus. All right, so same sort of thing. What multiplies to positive three, but adds to negative four? Well, negative one times a negative three multiplies to positive three and does negative one and negative three, do those add to negative four? Yes, they do. So X minus one, X minus three. Okay, what if it was X squared plus two X minus three? Now we got a plus and a minus. What about this? Okay. Well, what multiplies, actually first, let's always start. What multiplies to x squared, x and x. Okay, now my signs. What multiplies to a negative? A positive times a negative or a negative times a positive? Now, it's a little straightforward here because my x, you know, it's the same in both, x and x. If I was dealing with something where one was a 2x and the other was a regular x, I would have to hold off for a second to know which one would have the plus and which one would have the minus in it. But this one, X and X, it's both the same. So I can go ahead and write, I know that one's plus and one's minus because it multiplies to negative three. So I know this. Okay. Next bit. And this is the big bit. What multiplies to negative three but adds to positive two? So I'm going to write down my possibilities. Negative one times negative, excuse me, positive three, <laughs> getting ahead of myself, or positive one times negative three. Which of these two adds to two? Positive two. Negative one plus three is positive two. One plus a negative three is a negative two. So negative one and three is my answer. So it's X plus three x minus one. And all of these, if you want to go back and distribute them and multiply it just to check, like if you're uncertain when you're factoring, you can multiply back. You will, if you factored correctly, get that original. It's a good way to check it. Okay. And then our other scenario would be if you had x squared, let's see, um, minus 2x minus 3. We have two minuses. Okay. Well, in this case, we start, we have x and x. And this is a minus 3. And so we have a minus. I know a plus times a minus or a minus times a plus will equal a minus 3. And in this case, my initial uh, terms are the same. So it doesn't matter where I put the plus or minus, but I know one's a plus and one's a minus, and that's fine. Again, if it was like 2x 
an X, something like that. It would matter which one had the plus and which one had the minus, but that's a story for another day. And so in this one, if I have minus 2X, I'm going to go, okay, what multiplies to negative 3? Negative 1 and 3, and, or, or 1 and negative 3. Which of those adds to negative 2? Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. There's my answer, X plus 1, X minus 3. Okay, so that's taking you through talking about the signs and knowing which sign is which. The next big step is when we're talking about, we've got something with more factors. And this is where it's a puzzle. It's a problem solving exercise. What if it was something like x squared plus 6x plus 8? Okay, for this, starting the same way, always the same. First term, x squared. Okay, that's easy. x and x. I got that. All right. Now I look at my signs. I've got plus 8. What multiplies to a positive? Either two positives or two negatives. But it's going to add to 6, so I know it's two positives. Okay. Then my next bit, and it's the most important bit in many ways, is what multiplies to 8 but adds to six. There is no shame in writing down the factors, none. Especially when you get with some of these, um, some of these numbers that have a ton of factors. It can be very hard to do it in your head. Just write it down, it's fine. So what multiplies to eight? One and eight, two and four, and that's it. So which of those adds to six? One plus eight is nine, two plus four is, ah, six. So x plus two, x plus 4. Okay. And what if it was, say, something like x squared plus, hmm, ooh, I know, I know one, I know one. Okay, I'm going to do, make it a little more challenging here. x squared minus, Oh, and I just lost it. I had it in my head. I did. I did. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, minus 19x plus 60. Okay. First things first. It's the same process. Even when it gets with these, like what I call like the scary numbers, when it starts getting big, same process. Okay. So what multiplies to x squared? x and x. Okay. I've got a plus here. So whatever is multiplying either is positive, positive, or negative, negative. Ah, this over here is negative, so it's a negative, 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 negative. Okay, so what multiplies to 60 but adds to negative 19? Again, this is where we start writing our factors. If you don't know it off the top of your head, that's fine. Never forget the one times the number. It's very easy to forget that one. That's my little side tip. Never forget that. All right, 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10. That's a lot of factors. Now, I know these are going to be all negatives because we're multiplying negative times a negative. Now let's go through and add them and see what adds to negative 19. Negative 1, negative 60 is negative 61. Nope. Negative 2, negative 30, negative 32. Nope. Negative 3, negative 20, negative 23. Nope. Negative 4, negative 15. Ding, ding, ding. X minus 4, X minus 15. Okay, so that's our process. That's with the signs and the basic process for factoring when you don't have a coefficient here in front of the X and x squared is, or excuse me, for the x squared, and the x squared is positive. All right, so next time, that's our intro to factoring. Next time, we're going to add some, some craziness over here in front of the x squared, additional coefficients, and the like. So there'll be a link to that below. All right, if this was helpful to you um, in any way, shape, or form, if you could do the, you know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See ya.